In this video we are going to talk about how cluster OS rolling upgrade works and we are also going to see how to perform such an operation using PowerShell. Cluster OS rolling upgrade is a new feature that was introduced in Windows Server 2016 and this feature allows us the administrators to uh, run an upgrade of a cluster that is at least at Windows Server 2012 R2 level without having downtime for our workloads or with minimum downtime and this depends on the actual workload that we have in the cluster. This operation and this is a very important thing can be executed without additional hardware so if you have for example a 4 node Hyper-V cluster you can upgrade the OS for that cluster from 2012 R2 to 2016 without bringing in additional hardware. And also the cluster itself does not need to be stopped or restarted during this operation. In case you run into problems during the upgrade process, it's good to know that also the upgrade is reversible but only until a specific step which you as the administrator um, are able to say when uh, it will happen. So until you are sure that everything is working, is working correctly, you can be in a state that is reversible. And uh, it's worth mentioning that all of this does not require a second cluster or anything of the sorts. Let's see a couple of more information about how cluster OS rolling upgrade works. Very important to know is that the earliest version of OS that is supported is Windows Server 2012 R2. So if you have clusters on Windows Server 2012 or 2008 R2, then you are out of luck here. Also worth mentioning is that if you have Hyper-V clusters or Scale-Out File Server clusters, then these are the scenarios in which you can upgrade without any downtime at all. Any other workload that you may have in the cluster can also be upgraded with this method, but you will have downtime when moving roles between the cluster nodes. Also, all of this uh, upgrade process can be automated with PowerShell since we have a lot of commandlets that can help us do this. In case you have guest clusters running on Hyper-V with shared VHDX files as the shared storage, then uh, please be aware that you cannot use cluster OS rolling upgrade in this scenario. And during the upgrade and after the upgrade, until you specify that you want that you are finished uh, just be aware that your new operating systems are actually functioning in a compatibility mode with the old operating system and this is why the upgrade is reversible so let's see the primary steps that we should do to perform a cluster OS rolling upgrade in this scenario we have a cluster that is formed from four Hyper-V hosts running on Windows Server 2012 R2 and each of them have a virtual machine on them which is at version 5. So the virtual machines have been created on Windows Server 2012 R2 and this is the version that they have on this OS. The first actual step or step two in our diagram is we will uh, pause the one of the nodes of the cluster and drain all of its resources. This means that all of its resources, in this case the virtual machine, will be moved to another cluster node. After that step, we can remove that uh, cluster node from the cluster itself. So now we are left with only three nodes in the cluster. And for that machine, we can now upgrade the operating system. And when I say upgrade, I don't mean doing an actual in-place upgrade, 
but formatting the hard disk and reinstalling the new OS. Now after the OS upgrade is done, of course we should first install failover clustering and the Hyper-V role on that node. And after those things are taken care of, we can add it back to the cluster. So now we have in our cluster three Windows Server 2012 R2 hosts and one Windows Server 2016 hosts. And the cluster at this point is functioning in mixed OS mode which means that the Windows Server 2016 machine operates at the Windows Server 2012 R2 level, so in a sort of compatibility mode. Moving a little forward, we do exactly the same steps for the rest of the nodes in the cluster, of course, and at the end we should be in the following scenario. We have four nodes with Windows Server 2016, but our cluster is still running in mixed OS mode, so is at the functional level 8, which is the Windows Server 2012 R2 level. And in this mode, uh, the operation is still reversible, meaning that we can still add Windows Server 2012 R2 nodes to the cluster. So at this point, if something is wrong, you can go back to your previous configuration. Also worth mentioning that the virtual machines have not changed, they are still at version 5. And step 5 is the point of no return. At this step, we upgrade the cluster functional level to level 9. This means that now the cluster actually operates in Windows Server 2016 mode, so now it benefits from all of the enhancements brought in Windows Server 2016, but at least the VMs are still in version 5, meaning that any of these VMs could be moved to another server that is running Windows Server 2012 R2, and it would still work. But the cluster itself is uh, not reversible anymore, now you can only add Windows Server 2016 and newer nodes. And in the last step, which we will not cover in this video but in the next one, we can also upgrade the virtual machine versions. So now we can upgrade them to version 8, which corresponds to Windows Server 2016 hosts, and this means that now the VMs get all the new features that a VM on 2016 has, but they cannot be moved on a Windows Server 2012 R2 host. And uh, basically that was it for the uh, way to upgrade your cluster nodes to a newer OS, but there is also an alternative way which is a little more expensive, but it might be that it suits you better. You can also perform a rolling upgrade in case you already have extra hardware and in this scenario you do nothing to your existing nodes you just add the new nodes to the cluster one by one then you start evicting the old nodes and you remain with the 2016 ones so this way basically uh, you may consider it that it's a little re less risky but of course it's also a little more expensive because you have to have 8 servers instead of a 4. And in case you want more info, because I only covered some basic stuff here, you can access this uh, link and you can read a little more about this process. For example, a uh, little more steps uh, in between uh, the upgrade process, like uh, backing up the cluster database and so on. Now let's move on to the code and see how to actually perform a rolling upgrade. Okay, so uh, I am logged on on a domain controller from my environment and with PowerShell remoting I am connected to one of the nodes that will be part of the cluster. So HVS04C is one of the Windows Server 2016 machines that I will be uh, putting in my cluster. And at this point I have a two-node cluster that is formed from 
HVSO4A and HVSO4B and I have also uh, two virtual machines uh, created on uh, one of the nodes each. And like I said, on standby, I have already created two 2016 nodes, O4C and O4D. And I will be adding these to the cluster. And by uh, this, at this point, you guessed it, I will be performing a rolling upgrade, not by replacing each node one by one, but by adding two new nodes to the cluster and then removing the other ones because it's a, a little more simpler and less time consuming to film this video. But the steps and the code is similar. Okay, so in our case now, we don't have to first remove any node because we are not doing that scenario. So we can start adding the two cluster nodes to the cluster first. And these are the commands to add them, but we have to run each command from uh, the uh, specific host. Let's first run the command on O4C and add this node to our HVSO4 cluster. And now this node is added to our cluster. We can move on to the D node. And let's add this one also. Great, the command is done and this node has also been added. Now we can return to the domain controller and run the rest of the commands with PowerShell remoting. So with this out of the way, I want to show you now something new in Windows Server 2016 and this is the fact that you can see the cluster functional level. So if we uh, get cluster and select cluster functional level, you will see that we are at level 8 and this level corresponds to Windows Server 2012 R2. So we are uh, running now in uh, compatibility mode and if we just run get cluster you see that here it's uh, so there's nothing uh, strange. It's a normal cluster with the name HVS04 that has uh, four or it should have four nodes. And I can also show you this. And you see now uh, we have A, B, C, D. These two are the 2012 R2 nodes. These two are the 2016 nodes and these two will be gone from the cluster in the next commands. And speaking of this, uh, here is the way to pause one of the cluster nodes and also drain them of their uh, resources. So in this case, we are going to drain the cluster nodes of the virtual machines that they host. And uh, for the owner node of the cluster share volume, also that uh, resource. So let's run the command to suspend the node and you see that it's uh, paused and it should also drain all of its resources. Now, uh, in our case, I don't have any of the machines turned on, so this will be very fast. But in uh, your case, uh, actually in the background, a live migration will happen of the virtual machines from A to either uh, B, C or D depends on what the cluster wants to use. Uh, so with uh, this done, we can also remove the node from the cluster, but this has to be run directly from the node that we are going to remove. So let's run the command on the A node. So with the first node out of the cluster, let's also suspend the second one that we are going to remove. So this node is also suspended and uh, whatever resources it has should be moved to other nodes of the cluster. And now we can remove this one from our cluster. And it's interesting that we get uh, again this uh, error because even though we got the error, the node is actually gone from the cluster and I can actually show you because uh, it's strange. You see that the command worked, 
but still we get a strange error that access is denied uh, usually when you get this error uh, related to cluster commands it would mean that you have to run the command directly from the cluster node but uh, accepting this uh, yeah strange thing it seems that it's not really mandatory so i ran it with remoting and it worked uh, your mileage may vary please try it yourself and see how uh, you manage but with uh, this said now we have a cluster with only two nodes that are running windows server 2016 and you can see that the two virtual machines are now on c and on d so everything is okay from this standpoint we can now also update the cluster functional level which will update it to 9 which is the native windows server 2016 level so let's do this and let's see that it really has been updated and you see that now we have 9 so this is also done and one more thing that i want to do and i didn't do at the beginning is i want to configure the hyper v hosts the two new hyper v hosts with the basic settings that i would configure any hyper v host so the virtual disk and virtual machine paths i want them to be in the csv and i want enhanced enhanced session mode to be enabled so with this we managed to perform a cluster os rolling upgrade we still need to update the virtual machine versions but we are going to do that in the next video because i want also to talk a little about this feature so stay tuned like the video if you enjoyed it also share it subscribe to my channel to see when i put out new videos and thanks a lot for watching